morning chickens, how are you? Hey guys, it's Tucker Kelly here from Ms. The Farms, and I was figuring since it's Labor Day, and I have the day off from school, my dad has the day off from work, I figured I'd do one of those super cool day in a life type videos, so let's get going. Morning rabbits. Let's see how the pumpkins are doing this morning. Oh, they're getting pretty big. I planted these a month late, so seems like I'm only going to get green pumpkins. You can see one back there. But, uh, yeah, green pumpkins aren't quite what I was looking for, but they'll still work for duck feed. As you can see, it's a foggy morning here on the marsh. So here I am at the duck and goose pen. You can hear them in the background. And every morning before I let them out, I check the entire pen for mushrooms and mold and remove it because I don't want them eating it and getting sick or dying. And uh, while I'm doing that, I let my soaked grain dry out and strain it, and I'll show you how I do that. So I'll show you my grain mix when I go to make more after I finish chores. But right now I just need to strain the water out. So I've got all my grain here in a five gallon bucket. It's been soaking overnight. And now, oh, you want to get the water out because that's where all the stuff that's harder for them to digest in the grain goes when you soak it. That's the whole point of soaking it. So I have this cut up t-shirt that I use for like cheesecloth. I just put it on the top of the bucket. Then I take this bungee cord, wrap it around the top of the five gallon bucket to hold the t-shirt on. And this one's long so I need to go around twice. Tighten that up. Now I can put the bucket upside down and all the water will come out but all the good grain is stuck in there and uh, Justin Rhodes who made a really good video showing that this is actually 25% more effective than dry grain for broiler hens. He just fed his chickens on the ground and at first that's what I was doing for my ducks and geese but uh, they were just making a mess of it. Uh, you can put it on the ground and you won't need to strain it. It because the earth strains it naturally, but uh, yeah, that just wasn't working. The ducks and geese weren't eating it all, so I feed it to them in rubber poles, which means I need to strain all the water out. And this is by far the easiest way. I'll just set the bucket upside down here on this rock with one side higher and let all the water drain out while I check the fence for mushrooms, and then we'll come back to this and feed them. And so I'm just walking back and forth with the shovel looking for any mold or mushrooms and yeah, I found a couple today but not too many so that's good but it's been such a wet summer you know so that's why we've had so many oak oak apparently oak and acorns is poisonous to geese according to the google machine so if I find oak or acorns they tend to throw them out just to be on the safe side I did the whole mushroom sweep, got all the mushrooms out, took about 20 minutes. So the grain's been straining for 20 minutes on the rock there. Now I'm going to take this off. I kind of pull it off like this so all the grain that's stuck to the shirt will come off and stay in the bucket. All right, there we go. You see there's not too much on here, but there is a little. I'm going to waste it. And then here's the mixed grain. And I'll tell you about my mix that I'm still perfecting. I haven't quite mastered what I'm doing yet. I'm still figuring it out, but I'll show you how I mix this up. And then before I feed it to them, I add three tablespoons of brewer's yeast. So this brewer's yeast is like pure brewer's yeast for dogs and horses, but the person out at the feed store said it would be fine for waterfowl too. It was like 20 bucks for this four pound thing. They also sell brewer's yeast with garlic, but it's a lot more expensive. So I'll just sprinkle in three tablespoons and then I'll stir it in. All right, so to stir it, I've got this stirring piece of kindling. It's nice because it's got a flat edge, so it helps me get all the grain off the side of it so I don't waste it. There we go. Now I just stir it all in and I'm probably gonna need two hands. I already filled up their water last night, but since I don't have bowls yet just for feed, I still need to order 
I don't have to let the ducks and geese out and steal their water bowls for food. All ducks out! Water bowl. All ducks out! I actually need to sell the ducks because uh, they learn to eat their eggs. So I need to sell these ones and get new ones. Alright, there's one bull now. Let's let the geese out and get their bulls. Now the it's time to give them the grain and they're gonna go crazy, so not sure how well I'm gonna film this. <laughs> Now that I'm done with my ducks and geese, now I'm going to do my parents' chicken. Chickens are fairly easy in the morning. I let them out. Free the chickens! 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. Count them. And then check food and water and eggs. Now these are the old chickens and they're kind of eating their eggs. So you saw the little chickens. So they're going to replace these guys, but they're not laying quite yet. So we're still keeping the old chickens around. And I've got food and water. Now I'm done with my chores around the farm. I will do the rabbits and the little chickens. Oh, I still need to set grain to soaking for tomorrow. So let me show you that. So the first thing I do is I give everything a good rinse. Then I mix their grain. So since we just got rid of the goats and still have some leftover goat feed, I'm using up that so they get about a quart of oats, about a quart of black oil sunflower seeds. So now I give them a quart and a half of chicken scratch feed, which is some oats, some cracked corn, and I forget what else. This is the kind that doesn't have any oyster shells in it because apparently uh, too much calcium is bad for geese. I don't really know. And then I also give them a quart and a half of layer powder, which is just the this grain. This is what we give to our chickens. So this should be more nutritious for them and have more niacin, which is really important for geese. That's why I mix in the brewers these afterwards. And like I said, I'm still perfecting my recipe. And I will make a video in the future once I figure out the type of soaked grain I want to do. And then mix. So when we run out of the goat's grain, I will just be feeding them two and a half quarts of layer pellet and two and a half quarts of scratch i think and you want about four inches above the grain or in this case below the sunflowers because the sunflowers float all right that's good now i'll just put the lid on it and let it soak for 24 hours and it'll be good in a little bit fermented form tomorrow morning so it's around 7.50, I'm done with my chores, and now I'm heading up the road to do pony chores for the neighbors. I do their pony chores every weekday. Here I go. Good morning, Tilly. How are you doing this morning? Water check. Now fill up the outside water bucket. So Tilly's a um, miniature pony, I think, and she's like 20 years old. She's a rescue, and uh, she's actually missing an eye. So the current owners don't know how she lost her eye, but when they got her, she was missing an eye. So she's uh, kind of skittish of people, which you can understand. I would be if I only had one eye. Now I'll give the cats water and now give them some more food we've got a couple of barn cats but you almost never see them they 
I like to hide around in the barn. Hello, Tilly. I've got you your forage, hey? Are you excited for it, huh? Yeah. There you go. Forage. Get the old hay net. How much feed did you eat out of this last night, Tilly, huh? A lot. Okay, for tomorrow. Alright, now I just need to scoop up the horse poop and dump it. There's not too much out here this morning. Alright, now dump the manure. That's it, come back to the farm. Time for breakfast. Hi Gates! Hi chicken! So before I went to the neighbors to do chores, I just had a banana and now it's time for real breakfast. So this is cornmeal mush with maple syrup and honey berries from our own orchard. So it's 9-10, I'm done with breakfast. I did some marketing, trying to sell some ducks and some rabbits and stuff like that. And now we're gonna do some firewood. Yep. These are very majestic. It's 11 o'clock and it's time for our first snack, or no, second snack, <laughs> after first breakfast. Now, we're putting more firewood in the woodshed. So I got all the wood that we could get from there, except for the stuff that's way too hard to split, which we'll just let to rot. And then we got all of this, except for a couple that still need split, and we'll do that another day. By we splitting, I mean poppy. And then we've got like, we got like three more rows in the woodshed. So how many cords do you think this is? We probably have about six cords, five to six cords in there. Nice. More than enough for the winter for us. Yeah. Oh. Lunch time. Beans, rice, and then tomato salsa Cheese. and cheese that no one else can eat. <laughs> Hi Molly. Hi. So every day, either before or after lunch, I come out to check on the animals and do what we call afternoon chores. So check on the chickens, count them, collect the eggs, and give them any scraps. Got some bread scraps here. Chickens! There you go, guys. Like that, you see our rooster in the back, chicken Fourier. And then I also will check on the geese over there as well. Uh, let's see, nest box, see they ate an egg in there. That's why we gotta get rid of them. One, three, and here's an egg they ate quite a lot of too, so. Yeah, these chickens are definitely getting kinda cranky, so that's why we gotta get new ones, and then we also have a light for them here on a timer. I think it comes on at 4.30. Uh, we have that because it's getting dark earlier. All right, see you, chickens. Hi, guys. How are you? Very nice. So the eight ducks are doing well, and 14 out of the 15 geese are doing well, but the 15th goose, who is my littlest goose, and wasn't doing very well this morning. She's dead, so... It's a really sad loss to do, so. so. It seems like that's how it goes with farming sometimes. Like, you think you're doing everything right, and in some cases you are, and you still lose a bird. So every day after lunch, we have what we call rest time. So basically 90 minutes where we need to be kind of quiet, 
and let Molly sleep and let Mom have 90 minutes without arguing kids. I don't argue, by the way. And uh, normally, I can do stuff outside, but normally I take that 90 minutes to do editing for YouTube, so I'll show you some of that. On my desk, I've got the phone I use for editing. It's an iPhone 7, so a lot of people think you need like a fancy laptop or something in order to do your editing. You don't. An iPhone 7 works just fine. I've been using this for all my videos so far. I've got like, as of the recording of this, like 25. And I actually record my first three videos on the iPhone 7. And now I'm using a GoPro Hero 7 Silver for my videoing because it's slightly better quality than the iPhone 7, which is what I'm recording this on. And it's a lot more durable. For example, it's waterproof. So this is a video about our mini A-frame chicken tractors, and by the time you're watching this, it's out on YouTube already. But right now I'm going to edit, I'm going to add some new media. Let's see, recently added. By the way, in case you're wondering, the software I'm using is iMovie. So there's that. So I'll drag the audio down. And then I need to mute this because I don't want the background noise. So audio, mute. Alright, let's see how that plays. On Facebook at Ms. Par, blink low. Now that video is all done, so I'll probably upload it tonight. So rest is over, and it's snack I'm from having from Raisin Bran, and a fresh piece of bread that Mom made. So as you can see, I changed my clothes because it got hot out. So now I need to take down the goat's electric fence since we no longer have them. I need to take the fence down because I'm expanding the ducks and geese winter run that you see behind me into this whole area. So first thing, I need to take this down. Okay, that is the last of the line, now I just have to take the stakes out and lean them up against the goat house. And you'll notice that I left two lines because that one's the hot line for the duck fence and that's the ground line for the duck fence. So I'll leave that, but now I'll take out all the goat fence fiber rods. <laughs> it's 6.30 and now I'm doing night chores. I'm a half an hour late, so I'm gonna need to hurry. We got the hose on here and the hose comes all the way down here. I'm rinsing out the nasty water bowls now that have the feed in on this morning because they get all nasty with the food crusting in them all day. See this one, so I gotta rinse them out. <laughs> so yeah, the ducks and geese have free choice to water all day and then and all night. And then I give them their feed in the morning in these bowls. All right, so if you look at the pool, look how nasty it is. It's all dirt and poop and feathers. But this morning it was perfectly clean, and that's what 22 waterfowl can do in like 12 hours. So, yeah, don't eat the bucket handle goose. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this nasty water in a five-gallon bucket. And this is what I use to feed my pumpkins. I hope you can hear me over the gate. So while I let the kitty pool fill up, I'm going to give this to the pumpkin. So this is my pumpkin patch. It's inside the greenhouse, the winter duck greenhouse. As you can see, we added 10 more feet to the back, which will be to accommodate my expanding flock. Now here's the nasty duck water and there's a hill of pumpkins. I really just need to water the hill. I do it once a day, rain or shine. The duck water is really good and nutritious. It helps them grow faster, and it's all natural, so it's really good. Now, this system with watering the pumpkins with duck water is a system my dad named Duck Waponics. And uh, I'm dreaming up a system for next year to have like water tanks, a five gallon bucket, uphill there, and gravity fed lines to water this so it makes it my job a lot easier so I don't have to be doing this. But that won't happen until next year, so. Anyways, seems to be working very well. I've got two different varieties of pumpkins. I've got one variety that's 
more for jack-o'-lanterns and one that's more for pies but it seems like this year I'll just get green pumpkins which are fine for duck feed and goose feed all right so now I gotta do the water put one bucket in each house I'd highly recommend the rubber bowls with the handles on them they're a lot easier it's hard doing this with one hand There you go, that's the duck's water. Now, ah, do the geese. And these are the duck and goose summer houses. I really like them, they're tractors. Um, they're very good, I very much enjoyed them. Sensor ground, sort of uneven here. I put logs under the sides to keep predators out where I need to. And since it's inside the electric poultry net, I haven't had any problems all year. Now this farming homesteading life definitely isn't for everyone and definitely isn't for all kids my age. But for me personally and our family, this is great. We absolutely love what we're doing. We're always learning. And uh, even though it's not for everyone, I feel extremely blessed to be doing this. And like, I'm extremely happy just out here with the animals a lot. You know, doing ducks, doing geese. Yes, there are hard times, like when I lost the goose today. But overall, it's great and I would highly recommend it to anyone really like even if you're living in the city or a suburbs you can do microgreens on your kitchen counter or in your basement like there's no reason not to try it and if you hate it guess what you can always sell them and do something else so it's seven o'clock and right now we're getting all the ducks and geese in Poppy's helping me the ducks normally end up in the brown house so we'll put them there they pass it, yeah, it's open. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky, but that's are easier to herd than chicken. There we go, guys. Two, four, six, seven, two, four, six. We're missing one. Yeah, there's one hiding somewhere. Is that the one with a crooked foot? Oh no, it's. Oh yeah, that's Deuce, Duck Who Thinks He's a Goose, the Drake. Come on, Deuce! Silly duck. Gotta keep the ducks who know they're ducks. Now I just have to get this goose out. There we go. Six, eight. Now let's get the geese. Yeah, we put eight in one house, seven in the other. Come on, geese. All right. I'll get them down towards the green one, and you want to go around the other way? Yeah. Move it, geeses. In you go, geese. I never thought I'd hear you say the words. Two, four, six, eight. All right. Oh, wait, no, it's only six geese in the other sense. We lost that one. Oh, well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The big ones. That one that tried to give me a bloody nose with its wing when we were trying to take the picture for the thumbnail. Majestic geese. You gotta go to bed though. No arguing. I'm in charge. All right. Come on, geese. Bed. Oh, you wanna go around just in case they need you? Turn. Yep, we need them. Right. And the bed, geese. There we go. Two, four, six, two, four, six. They got their water. And you see they're kind of making a mess. So maybe tomorrow we'll either move them or give them some straw for bedding. See you tomorrow, geeseys. Okay, hook the electric fence back up. The alligator clips, which really good. This is the hot line that goes all the way back up to where I showed you earlier. Comes all the way down here. Alligator clip, which you can sometimes get zapped through. 
There you go, it's connected to the fence. And if you hear it down there, you hear it ticking. No, it's connected, it's the fence grounding out, but that's fine, I've got plenty of big charger. And that's it, night geese, night ducks. Now it's time to get the chickens in. So I've got the grain here and then Poppy's got the scratch feed, which is good for getting them in. Uh, I've herded the chickens in with my drone before, which is way more fun, but really it's more efficient to just give them scratch. Watch out for the rooster chickens. Here you go, guys. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. Night chickens. Oh, we gotta fill up their water. Can you do that, Poppy? Give them their water in the coop for the night, and that's it. I will say it's good to have your father around for unpaid labor. Night rooster. See you tomorrow. And the latch. That's that. See you tomorrow, chickens. Now I'm going and get supper before I'm late and mom gets mad at us. It's a really weird combination, but it is so good. So one of the best parts about living on a farm is the food. We've got lamb, which we butchered ourselves, and then rice and cabbage, and it's absolutely delicious. Mm -mm. And then I don't know what that sauce is. Ketchup, hot sauce, and mayonnaise. Really good. Huh. So as you can see, uh, I'm so hungry, so I'm having more cornmeal mush. Are you done eating yet? No. <laughs> and since I'm still hungry, I'm having a pancake with yeah. jam, because that's the best excuse I can find for our dessert. 